everyone, and welcome back to At the Table, the show that asks you to pull out your shares, get your TTRPG books, and join us at the table. We are joined by a very special person, a friend and fellow nerd, and we love them so much. Uh, and before we get into the player's guide for the Milwaukee Expanse and the Strength of Thousands, let's first get to meet this awesome person and everyone else here. Please, G-Dub, say uh, hello oh. and who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Oh, hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm G-W. You can find me on uh, IG and Twitter under GW005. That's two Bs and two zeros. <laughs> you can also find me on uh, the, t the, uh, uh, the Twitches on Fable 42 on Fridays, uh, where I play Quavon Whispers, uh, who is a... Um, Divine Book uh, Monster Hunter. It's our uh, Monster of the Week campaign. You can find me there at uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. Happy to be here. Awesome. Very happy to have you. All right, Michael Powell, you know the deal. Please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Well, as always, I am the dastardly, dashing Michael Powell, and you can find me all over the internet on my social medias, which is usually at Mr. Kapow, that's M-R-K-A-P-A-O. And how about you, PJ? Uh, you know me, my name is PJ McGall. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGall, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Come find me, come friend me. Let's have fun. Without further ado, let's crack open this book that just dropped, uh, I think, Today or yesterday, by the time you're seeing this, it might be a few weeks from now, but join us in enjoying the Player's Guide to Strength of Thousands. Let's get to, to it. The Expanse yes. from Pathfinder. Now we're going to be talking about the Player's Guide for the Strength of Thousands uh, Adventure Path. Uh, I believe just came out recently. This, this uh, Player's Guide... Yeah, it definitely came out yesterday. Thank you, Michael. Uh, so we're going to be going over this a little bit. It's a five-page document. It's pretty simple. Um, so the first things first we'll talk about is the branches of the school, the Magamba, Magambia. Mm. Sorry, there's a Y there. Because um, this kind of talks about the different schools within this uh, giant school. And for those of you that uh, kind of want a quick lowdown, effectively speaking, like the first greatest wizard in the world um, basically made this school in a school of magic and more mm. in the Mwangi expanse. Um, so you kind of have different branches of the school that focus on different things. It's... Um, it's like a how to, it's like a better version of of that stone castle school. If we're kind of getting my drift. Uh, really quick, <laughs> uh, PJ, do you mind mm -hmm. if I give a little background information on the strength of thousands of venture path? Sure, why not? All right. Well, um, for those of you who caught the PaizoCon live stream, uh, I want to say a few months ago. It was revealed that Strengths of Thousands is going to be the new Adventure Path for Paizo's Pathfinder game. And Adventure Path is basically how they release um, pre-made campaigns. I believe this one will be uh, level, will range all the way from level 1 to level 20. And it's going to be a bunch of different stuff. It's going to be based around a school. And also, it just might go uh, intergalactic. Dick, possibly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Space. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the different branches of the school that we're talking about here in the Moongi Expanse. Uh, one of them is called the Emerald Bows. It emphasizes camaraderie, the sense of community, and connection to follow Magambians. They also interact with these outside, with those outside the Magambia, and they spread the Academy's message. This is definitely a very good diplomatic group within the school. Uh, does someone else want to take the next one? Rain Scribes? I think there was one before. I could be wrong. Oh, uh, you, know, you might Cascade be right. Cascade Barriers? Yeah. 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 Cascade yeah, Barriers. Okay. Cascade Barriers. Um, let's see. Uh, esteemed imagination from the dreams of the most visionary, visionary magical theorists to the innovations of creative problem solvers of all stripes. Nice. That's a cool one. Like Power her. by dreams. I'm about that. Oh, that's I like that. Really cool. And thinking outside the box, like having mm -hmm. a whole group of people that use magic to like have creative solutions. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess I will take those rain scribes. Uh, rain scribes value adaptability in thoughts and deeds as well as a willingness mm -hmm. to admit errors and learn from past mistakes. I that I really that I really like because uh, you know what we've all done stuff in the past that's 
been cringe and, you know, not always great, but we take those experiences and learn from them to be a better person in the future. Mm -hmm. That's how mm -hmm. I see it. Sometimes you just have to blow up a magical room to learn to not, you know, exactly. it's, just a, it's a normal thing in life. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I absolutely like that. Like, what was the most cringiest thing you've ever done? I blew up a magical room. So how are we not going to do that again? I'm going to blow up more magical rooms so I don't feel cringe when I do it. <laughs> uh, you're going to blow up more magical rooms, but this time with style. With style. <laughs> uh, this one, I think, is one of my favorite ones uh, so far. The Tempest Sun Mages inspire valor, not only the physical courage to stand up for friends and the school, but also the intellectual courage to consider opposing viewpoints and widen one's understanding rather than staying entrenched in a single paradigm. I, I love everything about that. The, the physical courage and strength to do what's right while still keeping the emotional strength to do what's right including being receptacle to being receptive to new ideas and new knowledge not at all surprised this is the one that you uh i just don't know what you're talking gravitate about gravitate towards pj <laughs> shishi i don't know what you're talking about i'm not a paladin mm -hmm. so i think i think the last branch is uzanjati I like how that sounds. Um, understand that the knowledge lives in stories passed down through the generations and also is earned every day through personal experiences. Mm -hmm. So a blend of learning your history plus uh, what you learn now and like kind of combining the two and finding what sets right for you. Yeah, it's like uh, it's learning on the job. Yeah, I also like the idea, at least the vibe I'm getting from the uh, Uzanjadi is that like, not only do you learn through storytelling, but you accept that every day is a story for you to learn more. Like it's, it's mm -hmm. about living the storytelling as well as appreciating it. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, each student joins one of the primary branches to shape their academic understanding, but all Magambians are expected to embody these values to varying degrees, and members of the different branches work together on and off campus. There is no sorting hat, there is no Triwizards Cup, there's just decent people being decent people. So thank, thank God. It's like choosing a major and a minor. Yep. Yeah, you want uh, a major, you're gonna be majoring in business, but you're gonna minor in liberal arts. Now, <laughs> This is really exciting uh, because you are going to a school, so part of the game is going to be, yeah, you know, your, your dungeons with the dragons in them, but you also have to role play a student and you advance your branch knowledge, you know, the, the branch you chose by attending classes during downtime between and amid your adventures. So you are still not only encouraged, but expected to engage with that school role play and 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 environment so you know you want to you want to have your your uh high school au game yeah. here it is there you go oh and also another thing is um everybody who are attending the school will have a um will be taking on a spell casting class as well if you're gonna be uh what is it the word I'm looking for? If your main class, though, is going to be a martial class, you can still take the free ancestry uh, rule and have a spellcaster as your free ancestry class. Yeah, the, the free archetype rule. Yeah, archetype yeah. rule, yeah. Oh, free mm. archetype is so good. It's like, mm. hey there, do you want a multi-class but not worry about all the headaches of juggling math? Don't you worry. Every odd level, you're going to get a free multi-class feat because screw you, free money. It's mm. so good. Actually, I Sold, PJ, yeah. sold. One of the things, though, <laughs> I also want to point out, this is actually really interesting. It says here, mm -hmm. each character in this adventure path uh, gains either the druid multi-class archetype Mm -hmm. or the wizard multi-class archetype to reflect the primal and arcane teaching traditions of the school. Mm. And it says here, druids must select the wizard multi-class archetype and wizards must select the druid multi-class archetype. But, oh, char cool. but characters of other classes can choose either. Yeah, which honestly makes sense. Why would you want wizard multi-class feats if you're a wizard? It doesn't, doesn't match, doesn't mm. work in any way that you'd want. Um, so 
honestly, yeah, if I was a wizard, I would go for the Druid and Heartbeat. Gives you access to more magic and also gives you access to things like Wild Shape and a bunch mm -hmm. of other cool stuff. Oh, yeah. I also do like the fact that, you know, you don't, you don't have to have um, a spellcaster class as your main class. You go, okay, uh, I, I still want to be a, I don't know, I still want to be a fighter. But okay, cool. Uh, you can still take, but you're still going to take um, a multi-class archetype in, what do you call it, a wizard or a druid. So, so I'm really hoping if I ever play this with a GM and they're very flexible-minded, instead of wizard, can I choose Magus? Please, because I'm selfish and I'm a whore. I want Magus. <laughs> you, can, you can still take Magus, but you have to take either Wizard or Druid as your other um, oh, archetype. Okay, because I was hoping that my free archetype could be a Magus multi-class, which is coming out so mm. soon. I'm so excited. Uh I do want to note that what uh, there's an interesting note here in the player's guide, which I'm cheating. I'm using my phone. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, um, oh cheating on notes. Uh, it says a campaign over years. So this is, you're going to go for like the full college tour. And uh, so prepare for that. So if you're like, okay, I'm taking, you know, arcana zoological studies to learn more about arcane monsters. You can just make checks downtime that that takes months or years out of your study. You're, mm -hmm. you're, taking all this time to get really good at learning how dragons and unicorns work. Yeah, um, I, I would not suggest like playing the your characters uh, over real time. Yeah, don't play. Oh yeah, no. Oh, I unless you want. Oh, to, yeah, unless but, you want to, but it's gonna be, but it's gonna be kind of painful. That's, that's pretty intense. Yeah. Oh god, I just imagine there's that one diehard group of role players who like get dressed in the robes and they're like, no. We came here for role play. You want to graduate? You're going to spend four years studying. I want to see you take a multiple choice test and forget <laughs> to study and see the panic on your eyes. Okay, I'll, I'll run you through an imaginary uh, full fledged uh, college school. Yeah, let's, let's go for it. Oh, I'll well, give you those pressures. <laughs> uh, GW, um, yes. Rick, the GM, has a question for you in chat. If you want to oh. answer that, let's see what we have here. Uh, Rick. Uh, GM. Okay. Uh, did you work on the Milwaukee Expanse as a creator? And if so, uh, what part of the book were you is in your area? Do you work? I am still getting to know uh, who did the book, uh, but it is my favorite Pathfinder. I'm so glad that it's your favorite Pathfinder 2 ebook. Uh, I did not work on the book at all. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you for uh, thinking that I, I, I would have that writer skill. Uh, fortunately, I did not. Um, but so, so far, uh, from what I've read, I am really just enjoying the, uh, the nuance that's coming with this new book. Like, I, I, I love, like, the extra detail in the um in the uh, uh what am I, the heritages in in the races and things like that that i i love diving into so though i did not make this book or help write it those is what i what i really enjoy from from this book so far speaking <laughs> of nuance uh, i really like this here uh under languages in this campaign, references to the common uh, language refers to the Mwangi rather than the Taldane? Ta Taldane? Taldane, yeah. Taldane, uh, when you gain common as a default starting language, consider it to be Mwangi. You can learn Taldane, but uh, you won't have a lot of use for it. Other useful languages to pick up would include Draconic and Sylvan. Uh, so, yeah. I, I think that's a... It's a, it's a nice bit of detail we got right there. That's a really good look behind the curtain. Let's you know, like, because uh, Taldane is basically like the common language in Galarian. Um, mm -hmm. So I love they're like, hey, we're just hand waving this. All common is Mwangi. All Mwangi is common. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you really want to learn Taldane, you can learn it, but you're never going to use it. Which is always great when a GM can be like, yo, what's that? You want to learn how to speak Dwarven? They're all dead in my campaign. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to learn how to speak Dwarven. <laughs> or... Okay, dark. Dark, to be fair, dark twist. But you know what I'm trying to say. It's, yeah. it's a good it's yeah. a good give me, you know? Yeah. All right, um, let's jump over to the backgrounds because that's uh, some of the meaty bits they have here in the Player's Guide of Strength of Thousands Player's Guide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talking about the backgrounds? So sorry. Yes. I, I 
got com- I have totally ADHD out there yes. for a second. The okay. backgrounds. Uh, page six. Yes. Uh, you want me to start with the sponsored by the family? Sure, go for it. All right, the sponsored by the family background. Uh, just a heads up, a lot of these are going to be basically how you got into Mwangi because that's kind of your defining uh, mm-hmm. experience as an adventurer. Several members of your family have studied at the Magambia, although not all of them have graduated as lore speakers or even advanced past initiates to become attendants. Your family has decided that you are an excellent candidate to join their ranks. Although lore speakers of the Magambia know they are supported by the strength of thousands of graduates who have come before them, you can take the smaller, more personal comfort in the support of your family. Choose two ability boosts. One must be intelligence or charisma, and the other one is another free ability boost. You are trained in your choice of diplomacy or society. You gain a skill feat, hobnobber, if you chose diplomacy, or eye for numbers, if you chose society. You are also trained in the Magambia lore. This background gives you so much for free. Mm -hmm. Your recommended primary branch is the Uzunjati. So it's kind of cool. They kind of say, like, you should really go this route mm-hmm. for family because of mm-hmm. this thing. I like um, that. I, I kind of want to say sponsored by family. To me, it sounds like while you're going to school, you're still living at home. Or at the very least, your family sends you a care package every week. You know, I like that because that definitely informs role play. It's like, yeah, my mm-hmm. mom and dad, they keep sending me, like, <laughs> these care packages, and the sweaters don't fit, the food's real bad, but they're doing their best. <laughs> or what, you go home every weekend to do laundry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, just, you like, the token rich kid, you know, uh, the token uh, rich friend you have. Like, oh, you, your, your family is doing work for you? Oh, that's really cool. Uh, can I get a little bit of that? Definitely. I definitely yeah. see that with the whole, like, yeah, my, my parents... Our, our alumni, and <laughs> I'm a legacy, and they paid for me to get in. All right, uh, GW, why don't you take the second one, sponsored by teacher? All right, sponsored by teacher OT background. Let's see. Uh, you have known the uh, Magambi? Like Magambi? Magambian. Magambian. There we go. We got there. You have known the Magambian teacher, uh, Takulu OT, and his wife, uh Niana for many years. Both are amateur bird watchers and magicians. Uh, and you share one of these hobbies. Uh, they are pleasant people and uh, well regarded in Nantumbu, uh, although their mistakable generosity and friendless, friendliness strikes uh, cynics as too earnest to be genuine. You know otherwise, uh, Takulu and Niani uh, are just as sincere, sincere as they appear. Uh, Takulu always seems to watch you with a, a discerning eye, and one day he, idle, he idly observes that you'd be well at the uh, Magambi, Magambia. Uh, talking about uh, further with him, uh, Takulu agreed that he would sponsor you personally and be the one to give your intake interview. Uh, with a twinkle in his eye, he asked that you call him Teacher OT from now on, just as all of his students do. Choose two ability boosts. One must be to wisdom or charisma. The one is a free ability boost. Uh, you're trained in your choice of the survival or the performance skill. You gain a skill feat, uh, survey wildfire, wildlife, survey wildlife in one, choose survival or impressive performance, uh, if you choose performance. You're also trained in the Nantumbu lore. Your recommended, uh, primary branch is the Emerald Buffs. You know, I like I like that that this background kind of already already automatically gives you a connection to one of the teachers. You know, so like now you get to role play this kind of mentor relationship. But that's what you're looking for. Like, so you're in a school, mm-hmm. and now teacher I don't know if it's teacher OT or teacher OT. I don't know. Um, but like now you know this person, and you can you can go to your gym and be like, I want to talk to this professor about like what's going on, or mm-hmm. get some inside scoop. And also, survival is just a good skill. Also, I want to say, um, if you take this uh, background, 
You're the TA. <laughs> You're the narc. Oh, Van, Van in the chat. I think this is back when uh, sponsored by family. Uh, Van said, or maybe Dom is paying for you. <laughs> or whenever the word is used, now all I see is Fast and Furious memes. I'm so mad. I hate the Fast and Furious memes. I, I also do like for, for this sponsorship, it's, I like the, the nuance of people not really trusting the reason why, why this teacher is um, sponsoring this student. Everyone thinks that it's not really genuine. That's also a really intricate, mm -hmm. interesting thing that you could implement into that game. Like, Yeah, you're like the like, teacher's pet. Yeah. I can I definitely see the jealousy within there. Yeah. Yeah. I think what I love is that you get two people who I'm assuming are not, they don't have kids and they just see how great and amazing you are. Maybe there's like a, a, a repressed parental like love for you. And they're like, no, you should mm -hmm. go to school. Cause like you're incredible. And everyone's all like, nah, they're, they're being uh, whatever. It's like, no, no, they actually love this kid. They just like, can't, you know, express it mm -hmm. any other way. Uh, okay, so sponsored by a stranger. Um, Michael Powell, is that you? Yes, it is. Uh, sponsored by a stranger. You remember the day the stranger approached you to make several particular inquiries. You don't remember much about them other than a large head and a frail body. At <laughs> first, <laughs> the stranger's question seemed odd. How might forgotten history never oh, how might forgotten history nevertheless shape the present? Whether an insect hive mind could be manipulated at a distance and so on. <laughs> you don't remember all the questions and you don't know why you could refuse to answer some, but you felt compelled to answer others. The stranger nevertheless seemed pleased with your responses and insisted that you would find um study at the Mawangba enlightening you never saw them again but now you're here at the mawangba with more questions than answers about your future choose two ability boosts one must be intelligence or wisdom and one is a free ability boost you're training your choice of occultism or nature skill you gain your choice of dubious knowledge or quick identification skill feat you're also trained in insect lore your recommended primary branch is the rain scribes so honestly it, it, right off the bat it sounded like to me uh, the stranger is a little green man <laughs> from mars yeah I, i'm thinking this is the connection to when you go into space well i know that uh, the guys that made pathfinder and pathfinder one also made starfinder and i'm pretty sure that's a description of the grays mm -hmm. i think um or or at least the the bug people um, which I mean, which would do insect lore. Either way, Starfinder confirmed. There's a crossover. Mm -hmm. There you go. I think uh, that's also. I think that's a really. That's a really. It, it's a really interesting setup of how your character's uh, story can begin. Yeah, and it definitely informs starting role play. Also, I want to take a minute. I probably won't be able to see it with all the glare, but there's this awesome artwork mm -hmm. of a Milwaukee half elf. See if you can, yeah, it's showing up, and I love that. Like, I just love that uh, touch yeah. to, ooh, to the world. Ooh, really quick, also, um, sp imagine taking the sponsored by stranger background with your cl main class being investigator, and then taking uh, wizard as your uh, your uh, multi class uh, archetype. And you're like, I'll, I'm gonna learn who the stranger is, whether yeah. I like it or not. You could be a conspiracy <laughs> knight. You could like in your uh, dorm room. You could have that uh, conspiracy, uh, you know, yeah, the, 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 the 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 Charlie Cox board. Be like, okay, let's talk about the stranger for a minute. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next up, setup. sponsor. I actually gotta like this, especially just to like play that kind of comedic relief character. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Sponsored by a village. You come from a small community, far from the large cities, but the Magambia is known even in your isolated corner of the world. You have shown more scholarly talent than anyone from your village in many years, perhaps even generations, and the village elders have insisted you explore your potential in the Magambia. Whether you are eager to leave or not seemed irrelevant to the elders, you had the talent, so you must go. You don't know how the elders had the connections or influence to sponsor your education there, but you left your tight-knit community behind for the city of Nantabu 
non, yeah, non Tambu, and the Magambia at its heart. Choose two ability boosts. One must be intelligence or wisdom. The other one's a free boost. You are trained in your choice of crafting or survival. You gain the skill feat Crafter's Appraisal if you choose crafting or foraging if you chose survival. You are also trained in the lore skill appropriate for the terrain around your community, such as forest or jungle. Your, rec your recommended primary branch is the Cascade Bearers. Um... I like this. This this is interesting. Like, you know, this this could deal into like. Mm -hmm. This is a this is a scholarship or... student. Sorta. I mean, this is definitely like you know what it's like. Um, uh, someone who like had this big call for destiny and they were too poor. Their area is too poor, so they got all the money together and they're like, mm -hmm. "No, you need to go." Go to the school, get out. Mm -hmm. You have potential. It's wasted here. Yeah, uh, like I, I'm just going through over this uh, line. Said you don't know how the elders had the connections or influence to sponsor your education here. So I'm just going. Yeah. So your community just gave you a a uh, what do you call it? Uh, what I I just literally just called it a uh, scholarship. A scholarship. Maybe I think scholarship grant a grant. Maybe. Yes, a grant. grant a grant. A grant I can see because I think a scholarship comes from within the academia, within the university. Mm -hmm. This would definitely be like, yeah, they got together and they either like go funded me or like mm -hmm. petitioned a grant. And they're like, this this kid's got to go. They're too good. <laughs> but, but, but the Montgomerian uh, expanse. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, crowdsource fund. <laughs> the GoFundMe. Yeah, go go pathfind me. Nice, solid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, look, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll take it, but I won't take your pity. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we have one more. I think that's yours, my man. Yeah, uh, unsponsored background. Uh, you have aspirations of attending the Magambia Academy of Magic, but fate seemed to thwart you. At every turn, you were unable to obtain a sponsorship and lost a collection of helpful textbooks to unexpected uh, uh, insect damage. Oh, sad. Uh, you nevertheless made the uh, long trip to Nantambu through terrible weather, uncharacter uncharacteristically bad roads, and indifferent fellow travelers. Yet you have persevered. Uh, now that you are here alone but determined, you won't let anything stand in your way. Choose two ability boosts. Uh, one must be to uh, constitution or charisma, and one is a free ability boost. Uh, you're trained in your choice of the diplomacy or intimidation skill. You gain a skill feat uh, group impression if you choose diplomacy or intimidation, intimidating glare if you choose intimidation. Uh, you're also trained in um, ac uh, uh, academia lore. I think I said that right, academia lore. Okay. Academia, yeah. Academia lore, there we go. Uh, your um, uh, recommendation uh, prior branch is the Tempest Sun Mages. You know, I don't... <laughs> I love the perseverance of this background. Um, but at the same time, and maybe this is just looking at me from looking at it from a different point of view and from the things that I've seen, I kind of I kind of see like a possible evil wizard being born from this. But at the same time, this is great. This is really cool. I I'm just envisioning that's that one friend or student. That's always just a hot mess, like running just a little bit late. Yeah. Um, like he, like running uh, from his room, still kind of like maybe combing their hair or eating breakfast, like running with that, uh, like that anime trope, uh, a piece of toast still in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I, I definitely love, I see, because uh, I'm, I'm thinking uh, a group, let me rephrase this. I may be playing this adventure path with a group, and I might be taking this just because I love, as you said, GW, that kind of that plucky, uh, unflappable perseverance, you know, like mm -hmm. that, that little guy who's just doing his best, you know. It's so darn adorable. So I might have to take that into consideration. 
Uh, and I definitely see the evil beginnings too. Rick, Rick M, the GM, is is saying that like that that idea of like I'm all alone. I've had to mm -hmm. persevere so much. People have mm -hmm. been indifferent to me. They've let me struggle. Like oh. I came here and I've had no community. So mm -hmm. chop off my nose, kill your parents. There you go. You're you're, you're the emo art student. <laughs> the emo hair, the eyes, and it's like I don't even know why we try so hard with art. It'll never <laughs> equal. The true pain of life. Ugh. I do really like the, uh, the the ability choices they give you on this one too, uh, for this background, like constitution, like or charisma, like yeah, you would totally have to have one of those two to do all the things you did to get here. Like, yeah. So uh, everybody, from um, all the sponsored backgrounds that we got here, what would you say that uh, is your favorite? That's that's really tough. I love the story that each of these tell. You know, the mentor in the school, the family that believes in you more than Fast and the Furious, uh, <laughs> the mysterious elders that see a hidden potential in you. Um, but I have to say, I think just for like a personality and a basis for an individual character, unsponsored is really ripe with potential. Go either way, the adorable like cinnamon bun doing his best or the evil wizard in training who is who is kind of holding a grudge at the struggle they've had to endure this entire mm -hmm. time. And you get to play that either way, and it's right there for the picking. Uh, GW, what about you? Um, I think my favorite will probably be sponsored by a village, because I love community. Uh, yeah. So just, just the idea of just like um, a village or town or, or whatever coming together to um kind of lift up this uh this kid for higher mm -hmm. magical knowledge and stuff and you know send them off and like kind of like you know um getting excited like as like a whole as a community like i, I don't know i love that one mm -hmm. i'm i'm big and gooey what do you want <laughs> yeah sorry we love you I, see i i love all of these they, they all have great hooks that uh you, that a creative gm can really play from mm -hmm. but i gotta say just because i'm I'm the weirdo. <laughs> I like sponsored by a stranger because mm -hmm. now I'm just imagining what if an entire group took this background, the same background together, and they're all part of a uh, kind of a conspiracy uh, like s club. I was waiting for you to say cult. But I'm, or I'm, cult. I, we, we, okay. It goes both <laughs> ways. Goes, goes both ways. Goes both ways. But no, uh, I'm not gonna lie though. You make a very good point, Michael. Oh, sorry, yeah. so sorry. It's up in your toes. Uh, please finish your thought. Oh, go, I'll, go I'll ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, um, you make a really good point because you, if you're running this as a GM and you really want like a curveball C C story or a really good arc that's not written in the books, and you maybe need to like make something interesting while they're doing a bunch of downtime stuff. Make them solve the mystery of who the stranger is mm -hmm. as like a Freddy uh, mystery machine kind of group. It'll it's a really it writes itself. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't know what do now. Now I'm thinking. Uh, what if everybody also played the same ancestry and they're all Kanrasus? Oh my god. Uh, mm. GW, uh, you weren't here for the first uh, Mwangi Expanse video. A Kanrasu mm -hmm. is basically, they're like shards of cosmic force given consciousness, and they live in these uh, weird, intricate, like ruin looking uh, exoskeletons. Yeah. Interesting. They're like, also, they're super good at like being champions and clerics. They have like a bonus 10 HP. They heal like bananas. Uh, they're tough as nails. And they're just like, what if some sort of bioorganic computer came online and just started living as humans do? I see. Yeah, that's that's pretty intense. <laughs> that would be pretty intense. A, a pretty uh, intense blend right there. Yeah, but uh, so anyway, um, next, uh, really quick, I just want to, because uh, we are running there on time. Uh, mm -hmm. I got one more question for everybody. Sure, sure. Which branch would you go into? Oh, that's tough. I feel like as, as one was read, I was like, yes. Let me do a quick scroll. Um, yeah, I think... <laughs> I think it would have to be the uh, Uz Uzinjati. Just, mm -hmm. well, well hmm. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I love, so for me, just me as a person, um, I have like this huge allure to um, kind of origin story type things. So I'm al I always love hearing stories from like, you know, my grandparents, my parents and, and so forth and everything. So this, like you, you, you get your knowledge from kind of past events or past stories mm -hmm. and you blend them, you know, with, with the current day. So I don't know, I, I love that mesh of kind of the past and meeting the future. I'm about that life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think I would be the uh, Uzin, Uzin Jati. PJ, what about you? That's a very good question. Uh, yeah, I'm right there with you on the Uzanjati. It, it really is a, a tie between the Uzanjati and the, the Tempest Sun Mages because uh, while I also love physical valor and emotional valor and you know emotional elasticity and emotional caring and understanding, I'm also all about them stories. I love stories. I love telling them, sharing them, learning about them, even reveling in when they're really bad stories, you know? Um, and the Uzanjati seem to be all about like stories, whether it's the past as a learning tool or your current present being a story itself as a, as like an ideology. And I, and I love what GW said, like, it's almost like every day is a new origin story for you. Mm -hmm. And there's so much, not only beautiful poetry at that, but as a character personality, you know, playing like Stan Lee where everything is Excelsior, like every day, mm -hmm. that's such a fun spirit to tap into for a personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Uh, for me, at first, I was going to go with Rain Scribes because I love the idea of valuing at a, uh, at a, at a, at a, I don't know why I can't say Adaptability? That word. Adaptability, yes. It's a hard word. Yeah, it's hard. Adaptability. It's hard. Um, and also the fact that uh, the willingness to accept uh, errors and mistakes that you've done in the past, I'm mm -hmm. a, I am really do believe in, uh, well, to a certain extent, second chances. You know, mm -hmm. everybody deserves a second chance. But, ah, uh, the Cascade Bearers. I, I, I'm a... I'm one of those problem solver people, I believe. Uh, I think I'm one of those problem solver people who looks at a problem from different si different sides. And uh, it's probably uh, bad for me to do this, but usually instead of doing the most logical and straightforward, I tend to just go off off paper <laughs> with uh, creative problem solving. Yeah, I'll say we tried to yeah. solve like the job crisis and you made government regulated MMA for gambling. <laughs> it worked for Vegas. <laughs> You're not wrong. Like history shows government uh, regulated gambling helps the local economy. Doesn't help all people, but it helps most some of the it puts money in pots. I don't know. Whatever. You know what that tells me, Michael? It tells me that you are a true creative. That's what it tells Thank me. You. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Truly wise. Uh, all and, right. Well, and also kind of crazy. <laughs> and also kind. Of, I think you have to be a little crazy to be creative, you know. The Charlie uh, Cox, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about Pepe Sylvia. Uh, so really fast before we say goodbye. Apparently, there's a fan theory, and it may actually be true, that when um, when uh, Charlie was saying Pepe Sylvia, he was really misreading Pennsylvania because <laughs> he's illiterate and he mm -hmm. didn't know that every single letter was addressed to Pennsylvania, a.k.a. Peppy Sylvia. Oh, that's cute if it's true. I hope oh, so. I like that. I, ho I hope that one's true, actually. It's kind of adorable. <laughs> um, but that being said, uh, it is time to say goodbye. First of all, I want to say thank you so much to G-Dub for coming out to the show. Uh, we loved having you on here, and I hope we get to have you again here soon. And I hope we me. can steal you away for like a day or two for Edge of Legend. Uh, so uh, tell us again. Where, who are you? And where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Oh, okay, hi, uh, I am GW, that is who I am. <laughs> you can find me on IG and Twitter under GW005, two Bs, two zeros. Uh, you can also find me on Clarion Dawn, uh, which I uh, voice a um, um, engineer poet in space. You can find that on clarion.com or any of your favorite podcast, podcast platforms. I believe we just reached like uh, over 7,000 downloads. Like, it's, it's pretty insane. It's pretty awesome. It's Congrats. So cool. uh, thank you. You can also find me on Fridays on, on um, Fabled 42, 
um, where I play uh, Quavon Whispers, who is a uh, divine playbook, it, um, who is basically the team's um, edgy angel boy monster hunter. Uh, it is our weekly um, Monster of the Week campaign. So you can check me out there on 3 p.m. Pacific. Um, and that's me. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Glad, so glad to have you. Um, Michael, please tell them who you are and where they can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Well, as always, I am the dastardly, dashing Michael Pal, and uh, you can find me all over the internet on my social medias, which is at Mr. Kapow, that's M-R-K-A-P-A-O, or my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Michael Pal does stuff, because I do a lot of stuff, like my YouTube channel called Fantastic Tales of Adventure, and on Thursdays over at the Toyzilla Network uh, Twitch channel at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm part of a little show called Toyzilla Live where we talk about the newest toy and collectible releases and we, you know, usually jump into some kind of nostalgia, you know, thing. So that's a lot of fun and hope to see you there. Awesome. Hi, everyone. My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Come find me, come friend me, and let's have some fun. And when I'm not here with these awesome blokes, you can find me and all of the legends over at Edge of Legend, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard, here on Nat 20 Productions Official. Um, so I hope to see you tomorrow night. We should have the whole crew back together, and we'll see where we go with the Green War, World War Orc, as they have just uh, freed the last giant orc weapon of mass destruction from uh, the clutches of Korokos, and we'll see where they go next with the war effort. And the last but not least, a uh, quick shout-out to a good friend of the show and friend of the community, uh, Giren Song, The Written History of Foril. They have a Kickstarter. It's got three days left to go and Ooh. only needs another $5,000 to get its mark of 10 K for the gold. They're halfway there. Uh, anything you can give helps. You can go to www.kickstarter.com backslash projects backslash quarter elf backslash uh, Gwerson, the written history of Foral. Uh, I'll try to put that in the uh, Nat 20 chat uh, before we raid. And it was a pleasure having GW again. And we hope we can steal you away for a few days for Edge of Legend later. Most definitely. <laughs> nice. All right, we'll we'll, so. we'll do all the all the talking and chatting. And I gotta write so much. Why did I not prepare this ahead of time? So uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, hope to see you uh, next week. Bye. 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 Oh, you're gonna be.